So welcome everyone to our second live BioBest webinar. My name is Manon Jourdan. Um, I'm the implementation officer at Zeres Europe. And for the one of you who don't know who we are, we are a European network of about 36 civil society associations of zero rate experts in 29 countries. So we work together uh, with our members for the elimination of waste and the conservation of resources in our society. So this year, a big focus of the work uh, with our members is on bio waste management. Uh, as you know, uh, we have the EU, uh, very recent mandate for the separate collection of bio waste across all its member states, which is actually leading to a few uncertainties, mostly due to the efficiency gaps among countries and municipalities when it comes to bio waste collection and treatment. So that's uh, why we're actually focusing uh, a lot this year on, on bio waste management. So very briefly, let me introduce you to the Life BioBest projects in the context of which this webinar is organized. So Life BioBest is a 2.5 years project funded by the Life program. And uh, behind it, we are a consortium of five organizations with different expertise. So we have the ENT Foundation, the International Network of Cities and Region, also known under ACR+, the European Compost Network, the Italian Composting and Biogas Association, as well as us, Zero Syrup. So with this project, Life BioBest, which will end in June next year, we are hoping to guide the mainstreaming of uh, best bio waste management practices from collection to treatment through diverse tools and activities. So we will publish a lot of pu new publication and document. We offer technical support to local authorities and free dissemination events such as this webinar. So I really encourage you, for the one of you who still don't know the project, to check the website, lifebiobest.eu. We will uh, share the link uh, with you on the chat. Yeah? Uh, so last webinar that we organized as part of the project was back in September 2023. And uh, last time we discussed best collection practices for high density areas. Um, so this time we choose to focus on the treatment phase. Yeah. But rather than telling you about all different bio waste treatment technologies available for composting and, uh, and AD, um, we've chosen a slightly different approach. So um, we recognize that the effectiveness of uh, treatment technologies can depend highly on local and national context. So that's why in this webinar, we will also be talking about regulatory aspects. So all regulatory aspects that surround bio waste treatments. So there's kind of two key questions that we hope to address in this webinar. The first one will be, what regulations apply to the production and use of compost and digest states? What are the standards for the use and quality? And the second one would be, what regulatory tools can you leverage to ensure both the quality of the products and its economic viability? So this is kind of complex, but we hope that through the different presentation, you will have better insight on uh, what can be done, yeah? Um, so to help you to do so, we have with us three experts today from the field, which is very niche. Um, and we're very happy to have them with us today. So we have uh, Stefan Wolk from uh, European Compost Network. He is a scientific officer at ECN. I will present you, Stefan, a bit more extensively after, before his presentation. We have Alberto Confalonieri, who is the chair of the technical committee at the Italian Composting and Biogas Association. And finally, we have Ramon Plana, who is an independent uh, international consultant in the biological treatment of bio waste. Thank you for the like, Thank you for being with us today. Um, quick reminders before starting for the participants. Uh, so, as I said, this is a recorded webinar, uh, also live streamed on YouTube. Um, after each presentation, we will have about ten minutes for Q and A. Okay, so you will have. 10 minutes to get the answer of your questions uh, after the presentation of each uh, speaker. To ask your question, this is very important, but please use the Q&A tool only, which is down your screen, uh, and write it in there. You can write the question during the presentation of the speakers, and after the presentation, I will go through the question, ask the question directly to them, and they will answer orally. But please, to get an answer, use the Q&A box only. 
Um, we will try to address uh, all the questions, but of course it will depend um, on the time we have. If some of the questions cannot be answered orally, the speakers can also answer the question directly uh, in the Q&A box, okay, uh, by writing an answer. For other comments, links to share, but also to present yourself, I encourage you to use the chat box. So Nana, our host, already writes a little message in there. So feel free to also like drop a message introducing yourself, who you are, why are you here? And if there is any links you want to share on your the comments or any other reactions to the to the, the different um, presentation, you can use the chat box. So as a sum up, Q and A for questions, chat box for other things. Okay. Right, so let's get straight into the topic uh, with our first speaker, which is Stefan Stefan Walk. Uh, as I said, Stefan is scientific officer at ECN European Compost Network. Um, I will. Briefly present you, Stefan, to the to the public. So Stefan is an experienced scientist who has spent many years working in the field of bioresources and circular economy. His experience uh, include waste management system analysis, but also concept development for new collection systems and implementation in case studies. He has co-authored several scientific publications and technical reports. And he is currently in the process to complete his PhD at the Hamburg University of Technology, where he was member of the Bioresource Management Group. So Stefan is also part, as I said previously, in the Live BioBest project. And he's currently leading on the drafting of guidelines for public authorities to promote quality composts and digestives. And today he will present uh, us the key aspects of this guideline which explain what technologies and regulation are available to enhance product quality. So Stefan, the floor is yours. And for the participants, remember to use the Q&A box to ask the questions uh, that you have for Stefan. Okay, you can go. Thank you so much. Uh, let me just quickly share my screen. And... Perfect, it is. It's already, it's already correct? Yeah, it is. Okay, all right. So yes, uh, thank you very much for this very um, uh, extensive uh, introduction to myself and what I'm what I'm doing at the ECN. Um, so as Manon said, um, with ECN we were leading a work package um, that um, resulted in the preparation of a guideline to promote quality compost and digestate uh, from the production of, from the reuse or from the recycling of uh, municipal bio waste. So this guideline um, has two parts, uh, one technical guideline and a regulatory guideline um, where we will address different aspects um, to achieve this high quality of, of final products. So the technical guideline um, it includes some definitions of uh, some important definitions uh, regarding bio-waste treatment. Um, process options for, for bio-waste treatment, um, some analysis of product qualities that um, might be very relevant for those who are not sure uh, what to expect from high quality treatment, and then also some best practice examples. Um, so this is the general um, yeah, uh, list of contents of the guideline. Um, I'm briefly showing some of them. Um, but not going into detail since we have uh, very experienced um, presenters as well who will go more into detail, probably also for some best practice examples. So as said already, um, the main focus um, of this guideline and also um, in the scope of the projects like BioBest is um, the recycling of, of uh, bioresources. So we have uh, three main options of, of uh, processing of these bio waste, which is composting, anaerobic digestion, and the integrated system of a combination of both. Um, we are not focusing, uh, we are primarily primarily focusing on these as, um, aspects. Um, there are further technologies, but um, they are out of the scope of this project. So to, to go into the technical details, we came up with a list of a uh, um, general description of these processes, very brief um, comparison as well, um, giving general information, the requirements for feedstocks, um, expected outputs. So what is a typical mass balance of 
a composting process, for example, um, the technical requirements, the capital costs, um, operational costs, just to give an overview of what, um, what is required um, for a process to run efficiently, um, a comparison of their technical robustness, um, scaling potential, and also common areas of process and product application. Uh, and for these, we also sh I show you on the next, no, I show you in two slides, but um, we have uh, some pros and cons comparing different aspects. Um, so just to show you um, an overview for the composting process, um, on the right-hand side, you see a figure of the general steps that have to be considered and from uh, the, 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 the um, resource, which is the bio-waste, until the final um, compost product, and also until um, the marketing of the product. Because we also always have to consider if we set up um, a concept for uh, bio-waste treatment, um, in the same stage, we also have to think about the marketing of the products already. And then um, for the different steps of processing, uh, we, we highlight different technologies, um, which are mentioned here, for example, the static open system, encapsulated systems, and so on and so forth, without going in too much detail, but to give an overview of the existing technologies. So just to show you how it looks like, uh, we prepared some kind of fact sheets uh, for each type of, um, or the most common process steps. So uh, on the left-hand side, you, for, for example, you see some composting, um, static system, open windrow, which is one of the most basic systems to, to start with, um, because we also want to show um, easy solutions that have um, yeah, very low risk uh, of implementation. And on the right hand side, you see um, an, a, an anaerobic digestion process that um, yeah, is quite advanced in terms of the technology, um, which is which which is usually used in a later stage of implementation um, for bio waste treatment. Um, but it also always depends on um, local circumstances. Um, if the preferred way is anaerobic digestion, composting, or or both, both of them combined, as I said previously. Um, another issue um, besides the actual treatment is um, mechanical pre and post treatment, which are important for um, the for the actual quality of the of the um, product. In the end, um, we also show some um, technologies that are used during the collection process. Uh, for example, um, bin controls or um, or the process of identification of, of impurities, plastics, metals, and so on, already during um, the, uh, the, the collection process. Um, so um, yeah, as you can see, uh, we, for example, on the left-hand side, uh, technical process, the drum screen is, for example, used to decrease the size uh, of, or to make a, a size separation of, of different particles. And we go on into further details of different, um, yeah, removal technologies for, for impurity, uh, impurities. Um, so this was the, the technical part of, of, or the technologies um, part um, of this guideline. We also shows, show a comparison of different product characteristics. Um, it's mainly um, used for bio waste derived compost, green waste derived compost, and the digest state of um, bio waste anaerobic digestion. And this one is mainly a qualitative comparison to the expectation of um, product composition and quality. Um, so this shows different aspects of uh, yeah the nutrients, uh, physical impurities. So again, plastics, um, uh, metals, and so on. Uh, the stability aspects, um, odor release, and so on and so forth. And then we also show a list of um, four examples of actual qualities of of products. Um, for for Italy, for Germany, for the Flanders region in Belgium and Austria. Um, we selected those because, first of all, they have a, a very well um, existing, um, very well functioning uh, quality assurance 
system in their countries and regions. And second, they are also members of ECN. So all of these um, quality assured products, they are also um, yeah verified by um, our in-house um, quality assurance team. So this is something to, to highlight um, the qualities that can be expected from the production of compost and digestate from uh, different uh, bio waste, but also from yeah different products. So this was the you know the overall technical part of the guideline, and, and we also included a regulatory guideline that um, is includes a description of uh, quality assurance schemes for compost and digestate. Um, legislation, existing legislation and regulations, and a, a detailed description of existing quality standards for, for products. So in, in general, a, a quality assurance scheme for compost and digestate must include four different steps. It needs, it requires a description for suitable feedstock materials and their origins, um, the operation quality, so which type of operation or treatment is, is being used. Um, a description of required um, product quality, and finally also um, the, the the use of the product. So to to come back to the, the initial point um, where I said um, when developing a concept for, for um, different um, products that will be produced um, from from bio waste, um, the main issue is to to think about the um, the market um, or to actually implement a market for these products. So um, these figures here, they describe um, the market on the left-hand side, you can see the, the current market segment in the European Union um, for different products from composting and from anaerobic digestion. And it shows that um, the main consumer of, of these products is still agriculture, but there are many more um, that can be um, that can be considered. And on the right-hand side, you, you see the, the sale price uh, for the different markets. So um, on the other hand side, you can see it, it goes into mainly into agriculture. However, um, agriculture is has the, one of the lowest sale prices for, for composting. So the more um, refining as well, so some, some others um, require more refining, more refined products. But you can re, uh, you can manage a much higher price uh, for these products as well. Um, so yes, I'm not going into detail here. Just showing the most important uh, regulations um, for for the products. It's the fertilizing product regulation, probably FPR, and also to consider if um, bio waste from animal origin is used. The animal bio byproduct regulation. So these both are the most important regulations on an on a European level um, that have to be considered when producing um, compost and digestate. Um, to introduce um, the, the ECN's quality assurance scheme here, we are looking into uh, quality standards and quality requirements. So uh, on the right hand side on this figure, you can see um, the, the parameters that are um, that have to be managed and have to be um, yeah, assured or, or revised um, for, for the compost that is produced. Um, it mainly refers to the, the organic matter content, um, inorganic pollutants, uh, impurities, and also has the hygiene aspects included. So um, as uh, maybe to mention as well, um, these um, quality standards also in the within the EU regulations, they are still voluntary. So um, there's a big gap between um, those who don't use a quality assurance scheme and those uh, who apply a quality assurance scheme. So coming to the end of my presentation, um, just to give you some take home messages um, that we came up with uh, during the development of this guideline. So it's very important to consider already the feedstock quality um, to, to achieve high quality products. So as soon as the quality of the feedstock is already high, um, the, the probability is also high to have a high quality product. Um, pre and post treatment is still important for improving the quality um, of the final product, uh, not only to remove uh, impurities, but as well also to refine the product um, 
adjust particle size and so on. And um, it's always important to consider the local circumstances um, for developing um, a recycling concept. So whether it's um, more important to have to produce compost or also to include biogas um, and anaerobic digestion. Um, and as well, the creation of a market is important. Um, you should be aware of the different market options and quality standards for the product are a must. Um, I can only repeat this. Um, quality standards will assure in the end the quality and also then the potential markets that um, the products can be marketed. And if you are in a region or uh, a country that does not have any regulations on this, uh, you can make use of existing ones, for example, the ECN's quality assurance scheme to start uh, with the development of quality standards. And yes, this uh, is my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. And I hope there will be some questions now. Thank you so much, Stefan. Thank you so much. We indeed have some questions for you. Um, just try to put my video again. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we have some questions actually, but first of all, thank you so much for, for the great presentation. And I would like just to, to remind uh, the audience that the guideline um, that Stephanie just uh, presented will be published very soon on the LifeBio based website. Um, it, sh it should be available and downloadable in June. So yeah, stay. Um, Stay tuned. So we have actually four questions for you, Stefan. We have 10 minutes. So let's see if we manage to, to read them all, um, to answer them all, sorry. So the first one uh, is from Afsane Nabi Far that actually uh, asked two questions in the Q&A. Um, Afsane is asking you uh, if you compared the different organic recycling technology in life cycle assessment and their respective environmental impacts. Or if you have any Very quick uh, answer. No, we didn't go in into this detail. This guideline is really meant for um, starting up um, with with um, treatment of bio waste. So we didn't go into the detail of of life cycle assessment. So we at some points we refer to um, different studies as well, which might include a life cycle analysis. But in this guideline, we kept it on a very simple level um to to describe the different options and also the, the existing regulations okay. so another question also from Asane. Uh, do you have an overview of what is the most practiced organic recycling technology in europe and what could be the outlook for future <laughs> this is a question um, actually i think yeah. most speakers could uh, could answer but yeah. <laughs> yeah no that's 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 an interesting um Interesting question. So far, um, we didn't include this overview um, with, with very precise numbers um, in this report. Um, but in ECN, we have a we have a data report um, published. Uh, I think it was last year, um, to which we also refer in the guideline, which describes um, the different shares of um, composting of anaerobic digestion. We don't go into detail of the specific composting technology that's, that is mostly applied um, because this is a very difficult um, task to, to fulfill. Um, we, we know from some member states, um, or let's say members of ECN, that they assess the different types of technologies as well. Um, but what I can say is that um, from or going through the history of biowaste management, mostly it was in the beginning, it was mostly composting, composting, composting. And we see a development now um, also with national plans or regional plans that a combination of anaerobic digestion and composting is, is more foreseen uh, in the future to, to actually take the most out of the resource that we have um, to, to treat. 
I hope that that was uh, clarifying the question. Thank you. It would be great if you could perhaps share the the link to this report in the in the chat after. Uh, so yeah, yeah. yeah, yes, yes, yes. I can definitely do that. Um, a few more questions for you, uh, Stefan, since we have time. Um, there's one actually about marketing. I think it's very interesting because in your presentation you really show that when we talk about bio waste treatment. There are many aspects that uh, needs to be thought of and included in the strategy, not only the technological one, but also like quality insurance and product marketing, which is ultimately linked to quality, which is also linked to the type of collection and performance. Uh, all of this to say and to introduce the question of Afsane again, he's asking uh, regarding marketing and pricing, do you have a comparison between compost um, versus digest plates? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's also included in the in the guideline. So um, yeah, the different um, so the, the different prices, um, the quantities that are being produced, um, that we will introduce in the guideline as well. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't know if you 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 wanted to hear specific figures now, but I think it's better to to have a look in the guidelines. <laughs> yeah, perhaps I don't know if you have maybe one or two figures. Uh, if you have it on the top of your mind, I, mean, I don't want to put you on spots. Um, but like is uh, one product easily to easier to market than the other. Um, uh, I think you can. It, there's there's no general um, you, you, there's no general statement to be made. It it really depends on the different countries, um, or regions. Um, also their their action plans of of what is being produced. Some countries they focus on the production of digestate. Some others they mainly produce compost. So um, yeah, it's it's really difficult to to make a statement for for very specific products because it it really differs um, in in all over all over Europe. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Also depends, I guess, on from the national regulation that might favor one product over the other. So yeah, yeah. yeah. so have a look at the guideline when they will be. <laughs> <talking about. laughs> um, okay, another question from um, Ole. I hope I said the, the name properly. Uh, so what is the future of impurities removed during composting? I'm not so sure. Okay, okay, yes. Thing. Is it, it, does the question refer more to the technology or does it refer rather refer to um, the raising awareness of reducing already in the first place? Um, I'm not so yeah. sure exactly. I don't know if Ole wants to to yeah precise yeah. a bit. But I, I, any, anyway, yeah. anyway, I can I can talk about both aspects. Um, yeah. So um, the, I think these are the main aspects that that will be considered in the future, um, in, increasing or continuing raising awareness about the the importance of having high quality feedstock already. Um, to to yeah to not have to deal with. Um, higher uh, shares of, of impurities already during during the processing, um, but also technologies they are advancing. Um, the main issue at the moment is um, for for impurity re removal is that you lose a lot of good material as well during the process. So um, in this in this sense, um, I think technologies will advance even further and to be uh, more sharp in the separation of actual impurities and the good material that we want in our final products. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, a related question from Joseph Def was asking if there is any initiatives in the quality, quality um, insurance scheme to handle the question of microplastic. Um, I think the the matter of microplastic it's it's on the table. Um, surely, um, there's a lot of research going on um, at the moment, also assessing the. The, the quantity of microplastics that is in actual composts, because right now um, we have this limit limiting value in most of the uh, countries where they have quality assurance. Um, particle sizes below two millimeters are not counted because it's really difficult to, to count them visually. Um, so the question is how to introduce a technology or a method a methodology to assess the level of micro uh, microplastics, micro impurities. Um, so it's definitely on the table. Um, there's just not a final solution for it yet because it's, there's a lot of research going on at the moment uh, in this regard. 
So we have a lot more questions uh, in the q &A. So what I would suggest is that we have like about five minutes more. So I will take one and two more. And then if you have time, Stephen, you can also uh, answer them manually in the Q&A box. Yes, yeah? yes sure. So uh, one from um, uh, Carlo Luzzi from Italy was asking, in your opinion, what should be the worst percentage of non-compostable stuffs in bio-waste acceptable in a composting or in a combined plant? What about the compostability and the biodigestionability of some stuffs? <laughs> Is there the risk that some compostable items are not digestible? <laughs> You yes, can see yeah. the question, uh, Stephen, uh, in the in the camera because it's an extension. Okay, time. yeah, uh, I will have a look as well. Um, so, of course, there's always a risk of materials entering entering recycling facility that are actually not compostable, and um, this is actually regulated um, uh, in EN fourteen uh, three four two. Was it correctly? I might have missed up the numbers, but. There's a there's a regulate EU regulation that um, has to regulate which materials are entering to be compostable and which are not, um, and also that these materials or these let's say compostable bags they they must be um, yeah, indicated that they are compostable according to this regulation. Um, so let me see if I missed something. In the question, I, I think I don't see. It's in the answer. Sorry, you can go in the answer and you can see it. It's an ah, okay. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Um, so I, I, I can't and I won't tell you the worst percentage of non compostable materials because it really depends on the performance of the plant. And as well, um, we are currently working on this in the BioWest project. So there's going to be another report, uh, probably this year, which will deal with input um, quality. So materials entering the bio waste recycling process, um, where we will try to come up with um, ranges probably that showcase um, also the, the effect of different levels of impur impurities on the final product quality. Um, so, but, for now, I think I can't tell you much more about this um, because it's also in any institution dealing with this, it's an ongoing discussion, um, how to set limits and where to set the limit. So um, yes, we also uh, in ECN, it's a, it's a very uh, common uh, topic of discussion. Okay. Maybe one last question, we have one minute. So the next one is from Martina. Uh, so first of all, she say thank you. Thank you very much for your great work, Stefan. And she she has a question um, for you. So in the guide in the guidelines are are described the technical conditions deeper. She said that you described in your presentation open wind room composting. Um, so yeah, she was wondering if uh, you were detailing more of the technical condition deeper of the yeah. things. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So the the processes are described. Um, we have some benefits of these processes, some uh, some negative aspects of these processes com always compared to the other options. So you can have a direct qualitative comparison of the different process options and then make an educated um, yeah, decision for yourself if you think this, this will be uh, the process that will probably suit the most to, to my conditions. Thank you so much, Stefan. And uh, yeah. It's time to move on uh, to the next speaker and take a look at the Italian context. Um, so our next speaker is Alberto Copalonieri, who is the chair of the technical committee at the Italian Composting, also a, an organization member of the Life Biobest Project. Alberto is a renowned expert in biobased treatment, and his job mainly focuses on regulatory and technical implications of composting and anaerobic digestion, biogas production, and upgrading to biomethan. Um, so he's a senior staff member of the, of the Italian Composting and Biogas Association, but is also a chair of the task group of, uh, on soil organic matter of the European Compost Network. Um, and he's taking part in several working groups uh, of the association. Um, so since 2020, Alberto uh, is an expert of the European Committee for Standardization dealing with organic soil improvements. So he has 
plenty of experience and learning to share with us. So thank you so much for, for being with us today, Alberto. And um, you will uh, talk and present the specific case of Italy. Uh, and most specifically, you will present the regulatory, political and technological advances that have led to the expansion of bio-waste collection and treatment in the country. So Alberto, the floor is yours. And same as for Stefan, use the Q&A box for, for your question. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manu, for the introduction. Thank you for, to the audience for being here. Let me share my screen and uh, let's quickly in, begin with uh, my presentation. Tell me if you can see it properly. Can you see my presentation? So, so far, it's uh, not in presenting mode. We still see okay. the slide. Okay, yes, I'm trying to put it in presenting mode. It should be... Can you see it? Uh... Mm -hmm. It's still the same. I don't know what. I don't know why. No worries. We can let take me what... try again. Let, let me try again to yeah, yeah, no problem, share the no screen. Good time. Okay. Is it in presenting? Is it in full screen mode now? No. Perhaps you need to open it through the app as you did before. Oh, I am doing the same uh, pathway that I did uh, in in the in the preliminary session. Mm -hmm. I don't know how what to do. Sorry, uh... um, it's all in Italian, so I might not be the best to <laughs> tell you how to display it properly. But uh... okay, what about going on uh, with this? Uh, uh... Please just go ahead. Yes, it's fine. Okay. yeah. It's okay. We, so it's okay. Not to lose too much time. It's okay. It's okay. No worries. I'm very, I'm very sorry so for this. Okay. Yes. Anyway, no the important is the content. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go to the content. So, thanks for again for the introduction. So, let me just uh, uh, quickly start this journey along uh, along the evolution of the bio waste management system, system, showing you briefly the main drivers uh, of this evolution that you can see here associated to the growth of separate collection of bio waste. That, that has started more than 30 year, uh, years ago from a crisis of the landfilling system due to a shortage of available disposal sites and has contributed to introduce in 1997 the first Italian separate collection targets of municipal waste, giving the first input uh, to food and garden separate collection. They were followed by the implementation, the enforcement of the uh, landfill directive uh, that set uh, rules uh, for the acceptance of uh, waste in landfills and set limits to the, to the biodegradable waste landfilling. Uh, meanwhile, the increase uh, of a separate collection uh, gave uh, room to the implementation of the composting sector, and uh, this made it possible to uh, set the first technical rules on composting at regional level and. Uh, uh, on compost quality and at uh, a national level. We have uh, uh, compost uh, standards since uh, 1998. Uh, then uh, the recycling system has been consolidated since uh, the early 2000s by the promotion of uh, renewable energy production that uh, gave room to the implementation of the first uh, AD technologies. And at last, uh, we come to the enforcement uh, of the EU circular economy package uh, that in Italy has, push, has, has pushed forward uh, the further uh, diffusion of separate collection and uh, above all, in my opinion, uh, the discussion of, on the optimization of the whole uh, chain due to the shift of attention from simple separate collection to the concept of recycling efficiency. And so going on, you can see that uh, here, you can see an, uh, the evolution of the recycling industry over the time expressed in amount of feedstock fed to the plants, uh, where in blue, in light blue, you see the amounts of uh, compost, uh, composting facilities that have dominated the market until around 2010, followed by a rapid increase uh, of the AD sector in red, that has led to a progressive balance between the two technology first, and then to an overtaking of uh, the anaerobic digestion approach in the very last years. And uh, as uh, I have mentioned uh, uh, the anaerobic digestion process has been pushed uh, 
uh, by a number of granting schemes uh, promoted by our government that first uh, were meant to subsidize uh, the production of electricity through the combustion of biogas, and uh, since uh, 2013, uh, to subsidize the production of biomethane to the upgrading of biogas, uh, above all, uh, to be used uh, as a renewable fuel for the transportation uh, sector. Uh, let's see now a snapshot of the current situation of uh, bio-waste recycling sector. You see here the plants in operation in 2022, about 360 plants in operation, treating around 8.3 million tons of organic-based waste, most of which are the municipal food and garden waste that we have talked uh, uh, so far but they include also more than 1 million tons of uh, sewage sludge and a few hundred tons of waste from the uh, food industry sector. In terms of number, the, most of the facilities are composting plants, but you see that uh, in terms of amount of waste treated, more than 50% are treated through anaerobic digestion processes, and uh, above all, uh, more than 65% of uh, food waste uh, is treated in facilities that include an aerobic digestion step in the recycling process. Um, as you can imagine, such a long story of uh, bio-waste recycling has allowed the, the presence of all technologies available that, just to mention the composting sector, range from static piles uh, based on small piles uh, up to windrows uh, that integrate uh, uh, force ventilation and piles uh, turning, in vessel systems, and other technologies that uh, allow further automated processes, monitoring, and control. If I have, uh, if I have to trace a trend, uh, I would say that uh, uh, the most engineered technologies are the preferred options uh, in case of uh, high demands in terms of envir environmental protection, and I mean above all the diffusion of odors in the, to the nearby population. And for high throughputs, uh, since uh, the engineering of the process uh, uh, tends to require less space per ton of waste treated. So uh, the larger the plants uh, in terms of through, through throughputs, uh, the, most the more the processes are engineered. Um, here you can see the possible layouts of composting and AD processes as implemented in Italy. In red, uh, in particular, you can see for each type of process uh, the most diffused uh, flow sheets. Uh, I don't want to enter into particular uh, details on this, uh, apart from highlighting here that uh, the AD layouts uh, on, on, the, on the right of the slide include uh, a biological post-treatment of digestate either with or without a solid liquid separation of, of digestate, that consists in a short composting step. In this way, disregarding the process, the AD process, or, or, or composting process, the final product uh, is always compost. Is always compost uh, that uh, whose production in Italy is currently around uh, 1.9 million tons uh, per year. Uh, as you can see, there are several types of compost uh, produced, uh, all uh, coded by our legislation on fertilizers. Uh, the different types depend on the nature of feedstocks used for the process, being then just green waste uh, or including food waste or uh, sewage sludge. And then, thanks to the presence uh, since uh, 2004 of a quality assurance scheme, that was created by my association, the Italian Composting Association, and that now involves around 35% of the compost produced uh, on the market. Uh, we are able to trace uh, to, through periodical interviews uh, that we make to producers, the final destinations of the product. That is uh, for every type of compost, mainly professional agriculture, except for uh, green compost on, on the left uh, of the slide, whose main destination is the gardening sector and the production of, of growing media. Uh, this said, let me quickly in a few slides retrace the stages of this story through the examples of one of the many bio-waste recycling companies that uh, having been on the market for many years uh, have evolved along the time accordingly. 
This company is called the Calabria Maceri Servizi. It's based in Calabria, south of Italy, an area that uh, for a long time has been a lagging behind territory compared to the more advanced northern regions. Calabria Maceri is a private company born in the early 90s uh, with a mission of managing different uh, waste streams, including uh, bio waste and residual uh, waste uh, management. Here, the story along the time, and see in particular, I highlight that since 2009, the company has started to biostabilize the, in, the unsorted municipal waste stream uh, through an MBT unit. Uh, the stabilization step was based on forcefully ventilated and periodically turned windrows inside a building provided with exhaust air treatment units, so a very protective type of uh, facility. Then this plant was turned since 2014 into a double duty MBT and composting facility using both the technologies, using the same technology to biostabilize residual waste and to compost the source separated by waste that was started to be generated in, in the southern area in those years. And then a few years later, thanks to the first effective uh, granting schemes for biomethane production that we talked before, the company has built uh, and started to operate an integrated AD plus composting unit um, with, a, with a plug flow AD technology developed by the company itself that was able to treat about uh, 50,000 tons of bio waste per year. Uh, this unit has not replaced the previous composting line and the digested composting step is performed in new built in vessel reactors. Uh, but uh, but uh, what uh, we are particularly pleased to, to, to tell you uh, is uh, that the company has maintained and developed its commitment to the production and use of compost. Uh, developing a, par a market that is mainly local, but covers the whole country as well, uh, implementing the possibility of supplying compound in different shapes, uh, bulk, uh, packed, uh, loose, uh, and pelletized, uh, being able uh, to take care of clients, uh, the farmers, uh, including uh, through a compost application service, being open to research, uh, and working in cooperation with the regional agency for agriculture. And so coming to the conclusions and the few remarks I want to tell you, uh, if we can be satisfied by the diffusion of separate collection of bio waste in Italy, that uh, nowadays uh, covers more than 90% of the population, so in a few steps to go. And uh, we are assisting to a further increase of integrated anaerobic digestion and composting uh, facilities as a preferred option. Uh, that allows to optimize the recycling process and to obtain both compost and uh, biogas, biomethane. Uh, we still have to work uh, on the improvement of bio waste quality, above all food waste, uh, that in the last years uh, is losing, losing a bit ground and must be raised to assure the highest recycling efficiency. And finally, going back to the comments uh, to the previous slides uh, about uh, Calabra Maceri, the increase of anaerobic digestion shall not make us forget the main scope of the bio waste recycling uh, process that is, turning, that is turning waste into an organic fertilizer that in Italy represented, is represented by compost. So I think they, I have finished my presentation, so I'm open to the questions that meanwhile uh, would have been raised by the audience. So Manon, the floor, is, the floor is back to you. Thank you so much, Alberto. Perfectly on time as well, so well done. Um, yeah, we have some questions for you. Um, there is one actually that I think was uh, probably asked to Stefan, but I think it's it's better that you answer. Um, so Florin is asking, um, okay, so in some European countries, sludge from sewage treatment plants is not allowed as an input for compost. What do you think is the best approach in this direction? And do you think it is good to exclude this input from the start or to impose quality conditions on the input so that we can include as much biodegradable waste as possible in the circular economy. 
So it's a long question if you yeah. need to yeah, refresh your... I, I, I try to summarize. Yeah. <laughs> I am inclusive. Uh, we are uh, an inclusive uh, association. So basically, I support and we support the use of sludge to produce compost. Uh, uh, we are in favor of setting uh, uh, quality, stringent quality standards for uh, uh, sewage sludge uh, uh, able to be turned into fertilizers. We strongly support the composting process to, for a number of reasons, for turning a sewage sludge into uh, organic fertilizers. Uh, I also must tell you that uh, our support has been translated into specific regulations we recently set up uh, in our quality assurance scheme. So we set up uh, a, 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 a guidance, or maybe I, I should say uh, thresholds, for uh, sewage sludge uh, to be uh, able to be turned into compost uh, and able to uh, produce a compost complying to the regulation of the our uh, quality assurance scheme. Could you give us maybe the, the threshold if you have any numbers? Uh, oh, uh, <laughs> uh, basically we have put together the provisions in, in, in terms of uh, heavy metals that uh, have been uh, put in place by the European um, Directive uh, dating back to 86. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, added uh, a number of, uh, uh, above all, uh, uh, organic, uh, uh, persi persistent organic pollutants. There's a number of, of them. So I'm not able to um, um, recap and summarize all of them. But basically, we have put uh, together all reasonable, reasonable uh, organic and inorganic uh, parameters and limits that could uh, assure the production of uh, high quality compost. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. I think that answered well the question. Um, okay, we have another question from Carlo from Italy, who's asking if you have the information of waste coming out from the plants in Italy, how many tons do you register? Well, it's, it's it depends uh, from a number of uh, of uh, variables uh, ranging from the quality of uh, of the waste. Uh, you uh, you know that for for each ton of uh, impurity that affects the the bio waste that enters into the plant, you have to lose uh, 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 some organic material. We call it dragging effect. This dragging effect, uh, in turn. Uh, depends on the uh, recycling process uh, and the, the degree of op optimization that the technology uh, for the recycling and the management uh, of, uh, of the facility uh, results. This dragging effect uh, ranges from, uh, let's say, from uh, two to four. Uh, and so depending on the quality for example, for a, for a, uh, for a bio waste affected by 5% impurities, you can expect to lose from 10 to 20% of material in terms of reject. Yeah, important figures to keep in mind. Yeah. So there is another question from Afsani. She is asking, um, do you process all the kitchen bio wastes in Italy or only vegetable and fruits left over, like in Germany? Which technology is more robust to organically recycle all the biowaste generated in the household? Uh, we do uh, collect uh, in the separate in the in the food waste separate collection bin all uh, food waste. Uh, so we don't follow the northern uh, separate collection model. So we are inclusive inclusive even in this aspect. I will not answer to the question about the best technologies because. It very much depends upon the local conditions. So uh, every te technology is able to uh, degrade and to turn into compost all uh, the bio waste. Uh, uh, the, the suitability of different technologies uh, depends more on local conditions. Uh, if you uh, must be protective uh, to the environment, uh, if you need uh, to save. Uh, uh liquids uh, if you so every uh, local conditions uh, uh influence much more than the type of feedstocks the technology to be chosen of course mm -hmm. uh, there, 
the 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 AD technologies uh, of course uh, are getting ground, but because they can in general optimize the process because they can match uh, the production of of compost uh, to the uh, exploitation of the process losses that in this case are represented by the, the biogas. Okay, yeah, this is actually connected to another question from Afsani. She's asking you, what's the most practice uh, AD technology in Italy? Well, okay, uh, very in, 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 in a gen giving a gen very general uh, answer, since uh, one of the um, highest concern in Italy uh, related to the anaerobic digestion is the management of liquids, uh, because many plants are not uh, uh, placed near wastewater treatment plants, uh, they cannot be connected to a sewer. So uh, the, I, I would say that in general, dry technologies are the most preferred ones in this, uh, in this, uh, in, in, along these years. But uh, again, uh, in, 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 in where conditions, where local conditions uh, allow it, uh, uh, wet technologies are uh, present as well. So we have all the ranges of uh, technologies uh, for the anaerobic digestion process, but maybe the dry ones are in this moment uh, more, pre more preferred, but because they produce less liquids to manage. Okay, thank you. So we have two more minutes, so maybe time for one or two more questions. Um, the next one is from Eric de Vries, asking what's the difference in compost quality between that from organic waste directly and that from digestants? Oh, basically we don't see that much differences. Uh, maybe a little bit of uh, mineral nitrogen, mo nitrogen more in the compost produced from integrated processes. So uh, with a pre-anerbic digestion step, uh, and uh, maybe a higher pH to, of compost, but uh, these are the main uh, light differences we see. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe they are not statistically significant, but yeah. just, just just a trend. Okay, so maybe time for one last question from Cosima from France. She's asking: Are pre-treatment facilities common in Italy, like they are in France? Do you recommend the setup of these technologies or are they not necessary? Pre-treatment uh, pre ah, pre facility. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, again, it depends upon the process. Uh, AD technologies usually require pre-treatments because you have to introduce in the uh, di digester only clean materials, so um, materials without physical impurities. For the composting processes, we uh, discourage the uh, use of... Uh, uh, pre-treatments because they in, uh, in increase the amount of rejects, uh, but uh, if uh, waste uh, is much uh, too much uh, dirty in terms of contents of, of impurities, a pre-treatment step uh, that can be useful uh, as well in for pro composting processes. So it's already the end of our Q&A session with you, Alberto. There will be maybe uh, a bit more time at the end of the webinar. So it's uh, it's time, yes, to, to go with our last and final, like our last speaker, uh, Ramon Plana, uh, who is a biowaste management international expert with over 25 years experience in the sector. So to briefly present you, Ramon, uh, you hold a PhD in biology and industrial scale composting of organic waste. And since September 2007, you've been working as an independent international consultant for various companies, administrations and public bodies worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, so Ramon is known for having given training courses on composting, delivered speeches and contributed as a professor to a lot of master's program at university level. It's good to have you here. So you're going to teach us a bit <laughs> of stuff today. Um, and you're as well a founding member of the Professional Association for Waste Prevention, Management and Treatment called Fatile Auro. Uh, we right. can show you then right. in, the, in the chat, which is committed to advancing sustainable waste management practices worldwide. So very, very happy to have you with us today. I'm just sharing right now the, the link uh, for the website of Fertilier. Uh, and today you will present the case of small scale composting facilities as a possible viable option 
for resolving the management of biowaste in many um, specific local areas, but also territories, as well as the technical and regulatory challenges which are involved when setting up such, uh, such facilities. So the floor is yours, and thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Manon. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me to join you today in this webinar. And as Man said, they asked me to talk about the small composting facilities. And let me say that this is the same that the, those tourist packets that they give you two hours to visit the Museum of, of Louvre. This is something similar. Uh, I don't have much time to explain all the things I should be talking about, about this topic. So uh, let's go to try to give you a, a general view of what is happening in, in this scale of composting. First of all, I would like to share you this image of the population, population density in Europe. So you can have a view of the distribution of the people. Of course, most of the people trying to live in big cities, in big metropolitan areas. But there is a large extent of territory where there are a bit few people living, but there are towns, there are villages, and of course, there is a generation of foodways and bioways in those areas. Maybe Spain is one of the most characteristic territories like that, because most of the people is living in big municipalities, in big cities, 50% of the population, in fact, lives in 125 municipalities, of more than 8,000 that we have uh, here and of course we have tens of thousands of very small villages with very few people living there but we need to provide them the capacity of treat of manage the food waste the bio waste they generate as you know household composting community composting are very useful tools in those cases but also the small scale composting systems in that case, in Europe, there is a very big difference between countries in how they, they confront or they have the view about the bio waste management. There are some countries like Portugal, Spain, where we have been promoting very big composting and waste treatment facilities. And there are other countries like Austria, in another part of the table, where you can see they have around 20,000 habitants per each composting facility they have. In fact, we consider that Austria is the reference, is the source of this kind of, of model of the small decentralized composting facilities. Mm, they have around 500 compostings in their country with a very or quite small capa treatment capacity, mm, not even 3,000 tons of average treatment capacity. This is the result of their program, strategic program that has been operating in the last 30 years, or even a little more, about promoting home composting uh, and a small composting led by farms, local farmers who collect and or treat the bio waste from the village or towns around the, the farm, but also they promote local composting uh, facilities in a radius not uh, higher than 30 kilometers. If we compare it with here in, in Spain, one of the oh, one no, the most uh, important region in Spain that has been working in uh, waste management uh, for also many years. As you can see here in Catalonia, they, we have around 30 composting facilities, 33 composting facilities, and the average treatment capacity is almost 20,000 tons. So the view is being very different how we, we approach to the to the possibility of decentralized the bio waste management. Normally, uh, most of the places they look for big facilities, but the macroeconomic point of view, it's considered more important at the end, uh, uh, at the moment, to take decisions of how to manage the bio waste in a territory, in a province, in a region, etc. The small, the small scale composting facilities give us many advantages in the sense that we can adapt them to the necessities of the place, but also to the characteristics of the place about not only the kind of, of, the, of the composition of the food waste that is generated, but also the quantities, the resources that we have, for especially the bulky materials we're going to talk about, the weather conditions, and many other factors that affect the uh, the design and the and how we we create the concept of the of a small composting facility. 
but also you know all the composting systems that you can find in the market or you can you can develop on your own it make you uh or give you a very huge range of possibilities at, the, at that time so there are many pros uh, for the local scale of composting uh, the first of all is that you are creating a local waste management strategy based on the bio waste but it affects to all the other fractions from the like packaging paper glass etc there is a lot of effects in the community in the social point of view there is a community engagement around the waste management you are recovering resources the bio waste it, con it converts in a raw material to produce a high quality compost the flexibility of the facilities you can't include low tech but efficient solutions the environmental benefits there is no or oh, there is a very limited transportation of the uh, food waste to other territories, uh, the consume of energy is lower, the, um, the use of the compost normally is local, so you are promoting the soil health, etc. Community benefits, you are creating a local economy, you are creating local jobs, for example, educational opportunities to the community, they, become, they became aware about the waste uh, problem and many other factors related to the environment. You can implement, you can build these facilities in a very short time in comparison with a centralized one. And at the end, you are producing a high compost, uh, a compost with a high quality during all the year, not depending on many conditions. But of course, there are cons. It's not all, always is not pink and happy. There are other uh, issues about, uh, okay, where I can place these facilities because uh, in these cases, you are going to be usually quite close to populate areas. The initial investment is try. It used to be high in comparison with the uh, the quantity of food waste that you are going to to treat. The bio waste quality is a critical issue. You are going to see it now. The regulatory compliance, as we, we the previous speakers Roberto and Stefan have mentioned, it's very important. The technical expertise you need people who knows what it's doing, maintenance and needs, other and pet issues, and the waste management can become a problem too. But I think that this four, it's more important in the, uh, at the end. And that's, that's what I want to talk about in the following minutes. This is the balance we need to find when we try to create a, a composting facility at a small scale. The, this balance between, between the, co uh, the investment cost and operational costs, the capital OPEX that we used to, to talk about. It's really hard because at the end, normally you are invested in, in equipment, in the surface, uh, some kind of money to treat, for example, 200 tons of food waste per year, but with the same resources, you could be treating 800, but you only have 200. You don't need to, to, to increase it. So this is a, one of the delicate moments to find this economical balance and this also is directly related to the quality of the food waste that we are going to receive. As I said before, we try to make it as simple as possible, this kind of composting facility. So we have we have we need to have a clean food waste, a clean bio waste without contaminants, or at least at least at less as possible. We are talking about it's possible less than 100 percent of uh, sorry, one percent of contaminants, or at least no higher than two percent. It is perfectly possible, but it implies the collection system. And it means that we are talking about people who is going, they are going to separate it at homes at the end. And we are talking about the people, about the population, we're talking about political issues, because at the end, all these things are connected, as you know. So if we are talking, if we, are, if we need to create a local composting facility, a small one, we need to put together all these actors in the same place and take a common decision of what, what it implies, because it's not just where we're going to place my composting facility, it's that we all have to do some work to have a very good results at the end to, can, to do not need to invest high quantity of money, etc. Another fact, the bulking material, as you know, it is extremely important because we, we need it to end all the year to be sure that you have the best process conditions. So it is important to look at it like a local strategy that we are going to go 
for the green waste management plan in the sense that at the end from forests, from public parks, we're going to try to get as much bulky material as we can. Of course, we are not producing bulky material, but all the green waste that are generated in the area should be processed in the sense that we need it as the raw material to produce these bulky materials. If we have enough for what we need, we can think about simple composting system, reduce the process control requirements, the, the compost will have a higher quality and we have very low risk of environmental impacts. All together means a lower investment and lower operational costs. But if we don't have enough for any reason, then we are going to bet, we're going to look for more technical composting system. We have potential process uh, problems at some uh, moments. The quality of the product is going to be lower and you have an increased risk of environmental impacts. It means higher costs. In investment, we also have to think about the machinery, the equipment. As we know, uh, in most cases, we are talking about uh, the uh, turning, uh, uh, sorry, the composting turners, but in other cases, there are another machinery involved. Even if we look for more um, low range cost equipment, at the end, it results that they are relatively expensive for the size of the composting facilities. So in me, this normally is one of the main uh, investment points of, of the facility. But if we look for local manufacturers or we try to adapt another equ equipment to the composting system, like this is the case of the unifits that you are using for the feed, uh, prepare the feed for the cattle, uh, they are uh, perfectly possible to use it in, uh, in a composting plant with a, with a very low cost in comparison with the, with the other options. And also, there is also the chance of or share uh, equipment between different composting facilities in the in the area. Another aspect that we've been coming and talking about, and I think that there are some people in the audience that is really interested uh, about it, the regulatory compliance, because in many territories there is not a specific regulation for this kind of facility, for this size of facility. So it's left to inter interpretation of the administration of what they are going to ask for to this facility. And moreover, in many cases, the technicians from the administration have an overload of paperwork to do. And so all the decisions, all the deadlines have a lot of time to until they have a, a final resolution. So it in, at the end, it is translated into money the, all the time we have to wait. In some cases, uh, some is, uh, in some places they have create specific normative that they talk about administri administrative and technical conditions that the uh, facility must fulfill in order to give all the, all the permits. It's, it's a limitation maybe in the in the kind of uh, organic waste that can be treated, the treatment capacity, the activity license, but also you have to provide them with some uh, documents, studies that demonstrated that you know what they are doing, that you have a, a, a strong reason for the need of this facility, etc. And also the qualified staff. The composting is a complex biological process as we know. And the same that in, uh, in the cellars that produce wine or spirits, there's always the figure of the master of wine, the ornologist, the people who is an expert in the production in this process. In the composting facilities, we need us to have the same figure, a master composter, a people, person who really knows, has some expertise in not only theoretical, but also practical in composting that give you the guarantees that they are going to do the best to have a high quality product. There are some examples of small composting facilities that they, have, they also has a school. This is the case in Navarre in the north of Spain of this company, Josenea, that produce uh, medicinal herbs. They need compost and they also have, uh, in, they use people in risk of social exclusion like workers. So now they are doing also the collection of food waste in the municipalities around their, their factory, and but this, facility is also a school for the training of future operators of composting facilities and also with the university they, they have a research in organic fertilizers and do the broadcasting of this system. In 2021 they have a, 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 the winner of the Resilient Futures category in the Rural Inspiration Awards. 
And there are also another project, Circus project, that has been uh, operating in the last years here in, uh, in the Mediterranean Basin that create different composting schools in different countries. This one here is in Catalonia. But also it looks like a community composting area, but at the end with a, high, with a treatment capacity of more than 200 tons, it becomes like a small composting facility that gives the training to the workers. So at the end, they're going to be composting experts. At the end, uh, and uh, to finish the presentation, the, the question that is uh, being now very, very significant is, okay, with this small composting facility, because things are, things are changing. And now, if we only talk about the treatment capacity, George Lucas taught us around 40 years ago that size matters not. What you have here is a small composting facility in the north of Spain, farm composting for not more than 50 tons per year of bio waste. But here also in Spain, the Northwest, you have this city, Pontevedra. If you go to this square, you're going to find two community composting areas of uh, 10 meters cubic each that they can treat around 100, 100 tons per, of food waste per year. And in the area, they have another community composting site. So in, the, in this area, they have the capacity of treat a few hundreds of food waste. So it is a composting facility or not? Well. I think that we should create uh, uh, specific factors to define what is a composting facility. We propose the transportation of the food waste, the elements of industrial composting system adapted, and mechanical methods and any stage of the process are part of the definition of a composting facility uh, to have a difference from the community composting sites. But what I want to show you is that nowadays there are some rural areas where they are developing their own composting system to be uh, independent in bio waste management, to not depend on a centralized composting facility 50 kilometers far. In those cases, what they do is try to reduce at maximum the, cap the, the quantity of food waste that is needs to be treated outside. It means to voluntary for household and community composting, community composting sites. But if you don't do that, then you have to check for the mandatory bio waste management for a door-to-door -door collection system twice a week with, with identified bins that this food waste is taken to a local composting plant that is so simple as this, but it's in the same municipality. So transportation is just a few, two kilometers far, no more, but they allow them to produce a very high quality compost and also create a local uh, waste management system based on green waste, for produce bulky material and try to reduce as maximum the residual waste fraction with uh, closed road containers. At and the I'm end, sorry, you just yes. have one minute left. All right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. But well, they have a very very good results as you see, as you can see. So now it's going to be uh, a model that a lot of rural areas are looking for because they make them independent. Finally. We also have to take in mind all the Eureka system tourist sector that produce high quantities of food waste that can be really clean because it's very easy to, for them to separate it from uh, contaminants. And they give you a very good publicity. And at the end, this means money for them. I'm talking about different initiatives where uh, tourist industries are uh, responsible for the food waste they produce. So they generate, they collect it, they send it for composting in local composting uh, facilities that they promote and they invest money, but they are managed by local farms and to produce with that compost ecological products that are consumed in the in the facility. Uh, sorry, in the in the hotels. So these are, in my opinion, this is our the final the challenge learned. This we need clear the specific regulations for these kind of small scale facilities. The guarantee is that the quality of the incoming bio waste, and or if not, you need some kind of financial compensation and the technical training of the staff, so you can have the guarantees to the pro to produce high compost quality, external technical support, but also supervision guarantees that it's been working, operating during the old year, and try to create positive energies with the Eureka sector. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. As you said, this is going, this is going to be like visit the, the Louvre in one hour. I'm sorry if I can't talk about all the things that we should uh, comment with uh, this kind of, of composting systems and scales, but I hope it could be interesting for you at the end. Thank you very much.
Uh, no, thank you. That was amazing. It's super inspiring also to see um, how a small composting facility are allowing the community to come together and to, yeah, find solutions to this uh, possible issue that becomes then a resources for the entire territory or, or area. Yes, so they great. allow you to make a, on your own. You can create your, exactly. your system. Yeah. So you talked about training uh, at the end of the mm -hmm. presentation, and there's one question from uh, Ole. Uh, was asking if there are any training programs for local communities in Spain for those interested in establishing small local composting facilities. Well, now there are some territories, uh, some uh, regional governments in, in Spain that they have the responsibility of waste management that they uh, fulfill that or they create their own composting or waste management program, training program. And they oblige that anyone who wants to do community composting model, anyone, I mean, any municipality or even a private promoter, or they have, want to have a small community compost, so a small composting plant, they must do the go attend to this training course or at least certify that they have some training that can be yeah. acceptable. But yeah. uh, in most of the cases, they are, what they are doing is okay, we, because there, you know, there are a lot of different kinds of trainings. Uh, most of them are theoretical. So nowadays, they, what they are doing is to create their own training course. Uh, they look for the expertise. They look for the practical, uh, where they can do the practice. And they are offering it, okay, if you want to do it, you will, I mean, if you want to create or you want to have your community composting system, you must first be sure that your staff has been trained with this, with this course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there's another question from uh, Carlo Luzzi mm -hmm. from Italy, who's asking, uh, what's the higher level of impurities acceptable in a proximity plant? What's about the compostable packaging? Is it allowed? Well, the the higher level is as low as possible. I mean, more than 2%, it becomes problematic. Mm -hmm. You can manage the plant. Uh, one of the of the slides is a picture of a small component. Well, the one we are talking about the bio waste quality. The third photo, uh, photo it's from a, com a small composting facility that they have huge problems because the quantity or sorry the quantity of uh, contaminants that comes with the food waste is relatively high. It means that they need to invest time with the people separated by hand because they don't have any automatic systems or separation to separate those contaminants. And at the end, the, the efficiency, as you know, is relative. So at the end, part of those contaminants will be during the process. And even at the, if, if at the end you make a screening of the of the compost, you are going to still have some contaminants in the in the compost. So as I said, it's very important to have as less as possible. And that's what I said, that in many cases, it's very interesting to take in account the hotels, restaurants, that they produce huge quantities of food waste. But it's very easy for them to separate it from plastics, from glass, tins, mm -hmm. etc. And with the compostable packaging, well, uh, here it will depend a lot in the at the end of the uh, treatment capacity of the facility and the composting system. Mm -hmm. If it is a dynamic system with windrows, then uh, you are going to have problems because all the compostable bags, even if one hundred percent of the bags are compostable, they are going to be. In the in the in the turner, machine after the first turning, so you need to separate it by hand. So in static systems, there can be more acceptable, but you have to be sure for the size of the of its uh, unit, composting unit, that you have the uh, the process conditions that assure that this material is going to be at least pre-composted and it's going to become fragile and it be. Be more easy, more easy to degrade it in the whole whole process. So it will depend. And so, it, but it means that you have to take it in mind, and it can become a problem. In very very simple system, can become a, a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is one more question from Carlo, who is asking, um, what's the average dimensions in tons per year that you are treating in a small composting facility, and what should be the minimum tons to be treated to stay in the market? Do you have tested or managed electromechanical composting machineries? Well, uh, as, I, as you see, I, I present one of the facilities with only 50 tons per year. And it's very small composting. I think one of the smallest I know, like a composting facility. And in other, in other sense, there are community composting sites that have 
almost 100 tons of capacity well 50 tons each and if you have two or three in the in the area you 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 can get uh, around 100 tons of of capacity so there is not a minimum that will depend of the capacity of the investment you have the resources you have it's going the quality of the food waste so at the end it's, it's to find the balance that's what i said it's not a magical number but you have to take in mind that when you, you need to include more machinery more equipment then there is a moment that you have the resources for treat 800 and you only have 100 so here it's when the, this balance becomes problematic mm -hmm. that's, that's to find the, the best solution maybe you have to change the composting system and take more time to produce the compost there are, there are different uh, possibilities here and about the electromechanical yes i test them then i, I even have one of my own patented but uh, the problem then that is really expensive for the capacity they have so uh, in my opinion in my experience if you can afford them and you don't want to spend time and money uh, with with uh, the personnel you don't need with trained workers you want one person to, to press a button it could be it could be interesting but at the end you have to be sure that the product that you get at the end is compost because in some cases what you're producing is a bio drying of the food waste inside the machine and you have a product that when it gets wet again it's going to to continue the process and in some cases they you need you are obliged to use pellets from 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 wood and this is a product so you're you, you're consuming a product to treat a waste so I think that is uh, my under my point of view we should discuss about it so I think you think to we should review our ideas about about it thank you so much so yeah we You're have welcome. two minutes left to close this webinar but yeah, I would like to, to thank you. Uh, thank you all of the, the experts again who for being with us today and share their, their insights and knowledge. Uh, I really hope this session has been very useful uh, to all of the participants, but I, I believe it's, it has been. So before going and closing this webinar, I would like to invite you to check once again the Life BioBest website. My colleague Nana will put again the link uh, in the chat. Um, and just to remind you that in a few weeks, so next month in June, we will publish on the website a set of four guidelines. Uh, Stefan has already presented you one, which was about treatment. Um, but there will be uh, other guidelines published, which will cover the question of uh, best practice in bioest collection, governance and economic instruments, but also uh, communication and engagement of citizens. So yeah, feel free to, to check the website and yeah, in June, guidelines will be released, which will be very, very useful for uh, local authority, policy makers, um, et cetera. And finally, I would like to invite you to check out and share massively or as much as you can on your social media, the, um, the stories and successes we are promoting as uh, US Europe as part of a recently launched uh, campaign called Fork to Farm. And Nana will also put the link in the chat. And this campaign really hopes to change the bio-waste uh, statu quo we see in Europe uh, by highlighting some of the existing solutions that we see happening all over Europe in some places, uh, sharing uh, mostly the work of uh, some of our members. So yeah, fork to farm campaign. Um, feel free to, to reshare and to amplify a bit the, the voices of our members and of the solutions. Um, and that's it for me. Thank you so much for joining this webinar. Thanks you once again to the speakers. And yeah, have a very nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.